I, I would be remiss, Matt, if I didn't say this very, very early and upfront in our session. The reason that I got in the financial industry predominantly was because of my own financial advisor. And uh, I'll try to be brief by saying this, but when how I were, how old were you back then? What's that? How old were you back then? I was 23. Wow. But I was the same age when I entered the field. Wow. Isn't that right? Interesting. So, so like here's, here's, here's my, my quick story is I grew up pretty much between the knees of my grandfather on a John Deere 50. And you might remember hearing some of these lines back sure. 10 years ago. <laughs> but I, I was very close to my grandfather on the farm in Iowa. And my grandfather was a, a loving, uh, anecdotal sort of guy. He didn't have a lot of words, but the words he has said always seemed to matter. And he had really three easy principles of life for me that I followed. Then they were, they were this, hate debt. He, he lost the family farm in depression. The banks went belly up in Kissock, Iowa. And uh, he lost the family farm, his third generation farm. He was 18 because his parents were ill. And so I, I've come to realize that granddad was afraid of all debt, whether it was good debt or bad debt. And I've now been able to at least uh, improve my education to say what's good debt, bad debt. So I don't, I don't agree that every debt or all debt is bad, but, but knowing the difference is important. Second thing was to give 10% to others. The, the third thing was to save 10% for us. Now he's talking about doing that young. If you don't do it young, now it's 20 or maybe 30 or maybe 40 that you have to save. But, but I started saving, mowing my lawns, shoveling my walks in the wintertime, and helping my granddad and his neighbors on the farm. And I saved 10 cents out every dollar from the age of nine. By the time I was 25, I had $100,000 saved up. Why? Not because I made a lot of money, but because I saved a little out of every bit for a long time. And by the time I was 25, I'd been doing a fair amount of work during those years. All because of granddad, right? Well, granddad had a couple of other anecdotes. And he says, when you find what, out what God really designed you to be, and you find success, and that's determined by you, he says, it's time to consume less and give more. And be sure before you die, you create more than you consume. Nice. And so he was very philanthropic in his uh, advice. And it was, uh, it was not just about me. It was about others. And so... Uh, because I'd followed his advice, by the time I was 17, I bought my first house. Of course, you can't really technically own a house in Iowa at 17. My dad had to sign for it and then turn it back over to me when I turned 18. But I gutted that house and rebuilt it by tearing a two-story house down and stripping the lumber. And uh, I, I had a brand new house that I built and paid off by age 21. Wow. I had $120,000 of paid up life insurance prepaid and a $10,000 annuity by the age of 21. And finally, $3,500 in an old fund you might remember called Fidelity Magellan. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> now, listen, that wasn't a lot of money. But for a, a 21-year-old who made very little, most had ever made in the year was 18000 at that time. That's a lot of money to save. By the way, I, by the time I was 21, I had two kids and was married. Okay. So my advisor recognized when he came to my home 18 months into my disability, that uh, some had changed. I gained 100 pounds, flat bed rest. From, I got injured in the gypsum mine. I was also working in the gypsum mine besides the farm. And they got hurt down in the mine, 630 feet in the ground. And so the antidote was there was the bad, bed, flat bed rest for a couple of years. Or fa 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 actually, for, for, for one year, I ballooned 100 pounds. And when uh, Leon, his name, came to my house, he realized that, that I really thought I was dried up that I wasn't going to be in a hill of beans. And I'll never forget as we left the kitchen table, went to the foyer of my home, he put his hand on the knob of my door, spun around and he looked at me and he says, now, Curtis, I want you to know something. He says, I know very few men twice your age that's made so little and accomplished so much. And you have very little book knowledge about what it is that I do, but you're a perfect specimen of the best client I could ever have. And you need to be doing what I do because you don't need to be told. You already believe and you believe because of your grandfather. So it did, I didn't believe him at first. It took him a year dragging in Poland, but he finally got me into the industry. And that wow. ended up sending me to Prudential after I did a little research about five companies for the best training program at the time. Proof. And um, I will tell you for the first two years, it sucked. Why? I hated my job and I looked at, and the help one ads every day, every day. Uh, but about six months in the business, I had one of my church board members, I was on the church board, one of my church board members came to me 
and he and four other buddies were buying a, a $60 million general contracting company. They did $60 million in gross revenues annually, and they needed a buy-sell agreement. Now, remember, yeah. I'm, 20, I'm 23. I'm, tw- I'm Actually, I'm 23, and I'm six months in the business, and I'm not having a lot of success. And, then, and his question after that church board meeting was, hey, we're getting ready to do a buy-sell agreement. We need $10 million of total life insurance Oof. dollars. He says, what do you know about buy-sell agreements? What do you think I told him? <laughs> I know everything about buy-sell. I know everything. I remember <laughs> I was in church. <laughs> and how much do you think I actually knew? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, I will take that I signed up for every class, including the business insurance courses one and two with LUTC. And I went to a class in Iowa City where a fellow by the name of Tim Sellner was doing a class on family estate buy-sell agreements. And I went up to Tim during that at the end of that class and said, I got this case down Burlington, Iowa. Would you help me with it? Well, he became my first mentor and it took us two years, but I closed that case. Nah. $2 million dollars of permanent whole life insurance. Not because I was the smartest guy in the room, but I realized my limitations and the, and the clients in that business. So per, appreciated, first of all, the integrity by the fact that, that one of the church board members knew one of the members knew who it was, but that uh, I, I didn't tell him I knew everything when I got to the finally to the table, but I had all the answers with the expert. And so mentorship for me was the key to actually getting to a day. I stopped looking at the help wanted ads. Yep. And I realized that I could do this. By the way, I never used Tom Sellner again for a single buy sell agreement. Why? Because he taught me how to do it. I learned, I learned how to do it. And that really kickstarted my career in the life insurance industry, working on corporate plans, individual life, and estate planning. So the first thing that's really important to your new advisors who are starting out is don't underestimate the power of mentorship. And for you, you superior agents or your mature agents that have been out there, we always need to be building into somebody coming up. And we always need to be, we always need to be hitching with that person coming up to, to keep our feet hard on the ground. And so that's, I think that's as good of advice as you can get coming out of the gate. hundred percent, Curtis. You know, the, the thing about the, the, the evolution of the life insurance industry, you know, the, the average agent getting older and not necessarily a new batch of a younger agent coming to the marketplace. It's, it's, it's in, in, my, in my 21 years in the industry, I've just seen such a detachment of mentorship inside our industry. And so, so, you know, when you can find a mentor, man, hold on to them, man. And I, I'm just curious, when you close that case, did you split with your mentor 50, 50 on that? On that no, it was a 60, 40. He got 40. I got 60. That was our deal. Nice. My share was 160,000 in a single day. One case. One case. Now, here, here's the truth. I did my best to calculate all the money I made mowing lawns, shoveling walks. I was a busboy at 12 before the laws that exist today. Okay. As a busboy at Country Kitchen, I was a men's water salesman at J.C. Penney. I was a gas station attendant at Chick Standard, changing water pumps and tires. I did my best to calculate my earnings collectively since the, I started working. I made more in a single day and I collectively made my whole entire life all because of mentorship. And 40% of that went to somebody else. Listen, that was a great day. And I realized about 30 days later when I was driving home, that it had been 30 days since I looked at a help one ad in the paper. And I asked myself the question as I looked out the hood of my car, out my windshield, what changed? And it, and I noticed that my suits were still from the resale shop. I didn't spend any money. I was still driving the 77 Buick LeSabre with 250,000 miles on it. I was driving the same house, the same wife, same kids. The only thing that changed was between my ears. It was the confidence that I could do it. And when we get mentorship, we gain a lot of confidence when we find quality, ethical, honest, and expert mentorship. The, the, the downside sometimes we find in the marketplace, sometimes greed kicks in. And a lot of, lots of times guys can think, well, I could just watch this YouTube video, watch this YouTube video, uh, read this book, and I can try to close it by myself 100%. What would, you sell to, what would you say to that agent who's trying to do everything himself and they really have no experience in it? Well, first of all, when you're doing buy-sell agreements or retirement planning, the, the gravity at stake is so high for the consumer. Could you imagine that being brain surgery? And you're trying to do it to yourself on YouTube? Come on. Uh, and, and I would say, you know, if that's your mentality, you probably need a different job. Correct. Because we're talking about laser surgery here in the financial industry. And until we get the knowledge and the education, we need mentorship. And that's just a fact. 100%.